Hey there, I'm Dominic St. Pierre. Uh, let's have a quick look and uh, let's see if we can have some fun with uh, Go Generic. So, if you don't, or you know, if you're not familiar yet with uh, the generics in Go, well, this this would be a basic introduction. So, you know, what what if we were to have one slide and try to uh, to have as much detail uh, with generics as possible? If you uh, if you haven't. Uh, so basically, well, they they are pretty simple. They uh, you can define some function uh, with a parameter. Like we see, we have a function average in here, AVG, and we are accepting a type parameter. So this, you know, this T number is something that you know indicates to the compiler. Well, th this will be a generic function, and. Um, you know, I've I've defined I've defined this interface number to accept you know uh, most of the numbers in Go, if you will. Um, you can think of that as being a kind of a filter for your type. So you could you you can pass in you know in any type in here, and it would accept basically anything. But when you do that, uh, you know there there will be some things that that will be hard to do. For example, th there's this comparable. Uh, built-ins uh, that that is very useful when you want to uh, to do a lot of things with uh, you know comparing types and whatnot. But yes, you know th this is this is uh, this is just a, a very quick sample. So the idea is that you define your function, you pass one or more generics type that might have some constraints. So the number here is is what we call a constraint. So it tells the compiler well i you know yes i will i will pass you multiple types in here but they they still need to comply to some type of interface um so you know from here i mean the list uh, the list uh, we are receiving a slice of t so we are yet again receiving our generic type and we are also reusing it in our return uh, value in here uh, so T T is just a you know a standard uh, I, I would guess a globally accepted way of of n naming this, and uh, you know it's it's exactly like you you think it 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 should be. We have to call to our average function in here and our main function, and you know as you might guess if we are executing that. Uh, then yes, I mean we are we are getting two values. One is integer because this is what we are using, and the other one is a float. Um, so you know, don't. This is basically a, a very rough, uh, you know, one uh, under two minutes explanation of what generics are in Go. Uh, to be frank, I mean it's it's not like I'm using that very often, but it's nice that it's there. So I, you know, I've, I've started doing Go in, in 2014, and you know, uh, I was not missing them. You know, I'm I'm very used to uh, to use generics. I, I was a, a C sharp developer in, in in another life, if you will, and uh, you know, you get uh, you you get used to uh, to those generics. And I have done a lot of uh, functional programming as well in in Elm, uh, particularly. And uh, you know, yes, it's it's very it's very great. And and Go well. I tend to use them where I am using a lot of for loops with multiple types. So you know this this average function is is something uh, maybe a little bit representative in a, in a sense. Even though we are in a quick demo in here, well, if you were to have a an application or a program with multiple you know slice of of different type, uh, you know you you. Before generics, you you would need to create multiple function, and you know, now well, you know, we can just create one and hopefully, hopefully pass that. So so that's the basics. So let's see let's see what I really want to talk about today, and you know that that is a little bit more of what I want to uh, to talk a little bit here. So what if we? What if we were to want to uh, attach some generics function to a, a function receiver? So we have a, a structure called data in here, and we want a you know this test function to be generic. And uh, yes, so so one 
could think of, of you know, uh, defining it like we did for the, the average function that we saw, uh, a little bit like that. So, you know, yes, we will, we will have our receiver uh, type, which will be our data struct, and we will have our test function accepting any, uh, you know, any uh, generic type, and, and that's it. I mean, uh, we could think that, that this would work. It's not, and if I'm executing that, well, I... Uh, I don't have the uh, the compiler error, but basically it says something like, you know, this function cannot accept uh, uh, parameter type. So basically, the test function cannot it, it it cannot be typed like that. So this is not the way to to do that. And uh, you know, do, doing straight function in generics is is nice, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes I t I tend to organize my uh, my program and m usually my function into uh, into receiver function like that. You know, I I prefer that. Uh, is it the baggage from coming from uh, you know ten years of OP? I I don't know. It's you know to me it it feels you know sometimes uh, a little bit more structure if you will in ter in terms of code structure uh attaching function and uh and in my particular use case so when i built uh, static backend in, in 2019 static backend is my open source project so it's a uh, it's uh it's a firebase well ish uh backend server api written in go basically so um yeah Suffice to say that at some point I wa I wanted uh, the 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 user of, of the library because it's 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 a library it's a server uh, as well it can it can just be a library it can be a full server but ba basically I, I I have a an exported package uh, that Go developers can use and uh, you know talk to the database and things like that but from a a context of having some kind of type that they want to uh to pass here here and there in the database Let, let's let's switch light so so again this is not how to do that and let's see you know let's see how how we would do that so basically we need to type the structure actually so the structure that that is responsible for receiving uh you know uh, handling handling the, the the receiver function needs to be a generic type so again in here we are just defining our data uh, structure, but now we can uh, we can say, well, you know what this this structure will be generics, and again, you know you can you can use an interface as constraint. I'm I'm just using any in here just uh, just for simplicity, but but this structure can have uh, you know it, it can have field like I like, like we see in here. I I just have a table field for example. So let's uh, let's look at this collection function for uh, for a minute. So again, this function is used to uh, like construct this data, uh, this data generic type, if you will. So for my use case, you, you can think of, uh, you know, let's say that, well, for, first of all, the, the open source project is, is mainly a, a, a huge helper around CRUD operation in, in database. So let's say that you have some some kind of type in your uh, in your program let's say you are building a to-do list for example so you, you would have a task uh, a task uh, type or whatever so you can call this collection function passing this task and now you can pass a table name which is just a name of of the table directly in the system and this thing will return the structure that we created above but already, you know, properly typed and with with the table field initiated. So again, you know, this this should this should feel really, uh, you know, normal or uh, for lack of better word, uh, standard Go in here uh, if you are doing Go for some times. But the next function, so the create function is is where where things get interesting. So this function is our receiver function, and again. It's receiving the data structure, but which will be properly uh, uh, properly typed in a generic fashion. And now we can we can use the the t uh, the t uh, parameter type just like we did in the in the other example in our average example. 
And if we were to just print uh, what we have, so we, we can see the we will see the table and the value of, of the of the structure itself that we are receiving called X. And and I mean this is uh this is how you would do that. And in our main function, well yes, we can we can just call the collection with you know, specifying the type that, that we want, that we want to receive uh, and and from here I mean the D variable will uh, will be properly typed for all sorts of functions that 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 would be attached to this data structure and if we are executing that then you know as you might expect um, this this works so I mean uh, I find it decently interesting uh, this uh, this sometimes is is great because you you don't need to read you know to uh, re-indicate the compiler at each time that you are calling a function uh, you know what I, I want this 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 type and this type and whatnot so now you are kind of getting a parameterized structure and and from here if you know anything that this structure has you you will be able to to call that but from a generic point of view so this is nice so this is this is mostly how you would use that in a, in a real world situation. So again, I was talking about my open source projects. So you know, this this is kind of a pseudocode of what uh, what the library is offering. So basically, uh, you know, we call we call a collection fun function from the backend package, and now we can pass. Uh, a type in here, a, a real type. So you you can you can think of this task as being a a to do list that we are building. For example, so we have a name and a, and a done flag for uh, for our program. So by calling this collection uh, and specifying this type, then we will you know we will have all sorts of you know pre built functionalities for this specific type directly. Um, if you if you like this uh, this format and whatnot, so I I have two uh, I have two online courses uh, on Go, and uh, there's a discount uh, on the the description below of the video. So if you uh, if you appreciate that, well, my courses uh, uses slides like that and things like that, and we are focusing just on uh, on one piece of code at at a time. And I mean, there's no uh, there's no fluff if I can say that. All right, see you next week.